Hello CSE 1001 and CSE 73 students. My name is Paul and today I'm going to run you through the functionality expectations we have for task 1 and task 2 of assignment 3. So remember for both task 1 and task 2 uh, you want to work from uh, top to bottom with these tasks as some of the previous tasks rely on earlier tasks. Especially do not start task 2 features without finishing task 1 features as there are dependencies. The first task you'll need to complete for this assignment is task 1.1, app class. In this task, you'll need to write a main function that launches 9draft, and that main function must be called in some code that you'll have to figure out. In addition, you'll also need to set the title of the window to say 9draft. When you have successfully implemented task 1.1, it should look like this when you try running it. The window should open up, we should have 9 draft in the title bar, and you should see the game playing itself, and you'll be able to move around a little. Task 1.2 introduces mouse controls. So for each of the subtasks in 1.2, you will need to make a mouse binding of some form and add the necessary functionality to the method specified within each subtask. Task 1.2.1 Moving target focuses on having a reticle, a selector, around a mouse cursor when it's hovering over a block. This reticle should only appear when the mouse is within range of the player and it should disappear when it goes off screen. So in the given code, once you have it running after task 1.1, you'll see that there is no reticle when I move the mouse around at all. When you have implemented this task, you should have a reticle like this which moves around with the mouse and locks onto blocks that you could mine. When a reticle is too far away from the player, it should disappear. And if the mouse was to leave the window like this, then the cursor should disappear. In task 1.2.2, left clicking, the player needs to be able to attack blocks or mine them by left clicking on them. When a block is successfully mined by left clicking on it, the block must drop the drops allocated to it. In addition, when a block is successfully mined, the player's food level should be decreased if it is greater than zero. Alternatively, if their food level is zero, their health should be decreased. So we can see here with the status bar, when I mine a block, our food level decreases to nine, for example. We can also see that the block has successfully dropped a few dirt objects. So when I go to stand on them, my amount of dirt went from 20 to 23. If I keep mining dirt blocks, we can see my food level keeps decreasing, updating each time I click. And now that my food level is zero, the next block I mine will result in me losing health. And we can see here that the player is now losing health each time I mine a block. In task 1.2.3, right clicking, if the player right clicks on a block, they will use that block. Alternatively, if there is no block, that is it's an empty space, item.place will be called, and that will have different effects depending on if they're holding an item such as a sword or if they're holding an item such as a block. So for example, if we click on this empty space, while we have the dirt selected in our hotbar, we'll start placing dirt blocks, such as this. And so, for example, we can build a house. Now, if we were to get the crafting table selected and place the crafting table, if I now right-click on this crafting table, it will now open its screen. I have used that block. If I select something like my stone axe, which is not a block, and I right click on an empty space, item.place for this object will be called. In this case, it just disappears. A more detailed overview of how the crafting table works will be demonstrated when we get up to task 2.3. In task 1.3, status view class, you will need to implement the status view class inheriting from TK frame. So as we've seen in previous segments of this video, and for your reference, the basic GUI example in the assignments sheet, the status view must be displayed beneath the game display with health on the left side and food on the right side within the same row. 
Every single time the player's food or health changes, those displays must be updated accordingly. Both health and food must be rounded to the nearest 0.5, that is, half or whole numbers. And for your convenience, you'll likely want to have a set health and similarly a set food function to help with updating your display. Task 1.4, Basic Items, deals with the problem of mining blocks, specifically um, blocks that do not have block items implemented yet. So your job will be to modify the create item method such that it will now generate wood and stone items when wood and stone are mined successfully. The way you can verify that you've got this right, besides when playing the game, is to also run these commands. As most of you are using PyCharm, it will be a little bit difficult to try accessing the Python shell after you've terminated the game. So you, might, you may find it easier to use idle, where the shell will become available once the game is terminated, and then we'll be able to run these commands as another check that things are working. So when we start the game from idle, the shell opens up, of course, and then eventually the game. Um, so if you've implemented this correctly, you should be able to destroy this tree, and wood blocks will drop, and they'll appear in our hotbar. The game as you get it, exceptions will be raised when you try mining the wooden tree. Now that we've finished here, we'll now close the game. So we can see the shell has returned and the prompt is available. So we can now run those commands. So we'll now create a wood block. And we can see that wood is a block item, so that would be a sign that create item is successfully implemented. And then if I try to do a wood.place, so as if I'm placing it into the world, we can see we get this result. And then we get the block ID and eventually figure out what would be placed. So we index into that result we had earlier. And now we create a block. And we see that we would place a resource block, wood, what the tree was made of in the game. Task 1.5, Keyboard Controls, deals with the handling of different keyboard inputs. So in task 1.5.1, for example, we're handling when the spacebar is pushed that the player jumps into the air. Now this will have two effects on the player's velocity. First of all, you need to give them a negative Y velocity so they jump upwards on the screen. Um, the reasoning for this is made obvious in the task sheet. In addition, the X component, so their horizontal movement, uh, that should be changed in some way when the player jumps. So that could be speeding up or maybe it could be slowing down. It is acceptable if the player is able to double jump, triple jump, etc. As in multiple jumps, even when they're not on the ground. Going to the game, if I get the player to start moving a bit and we jump, we can see that the player slows down significantly when they jump. Alternatively, the player could sped up when they jumped. Task 1.5.2 focuses on the hotbar. So when the game is given to you, it does have a hotbar at the bottom, but you do not have the ability to select different items. Your job will be to map the number keys 1 through to 9 and 0, that is 1 being the leftmost button and 0 being the rightmost button on your keyboard, to select the appropriate cell in the hotbar. We can see that by default it has selected the first position, the same as if I had pushed 1. So if I push 2, the pickaxe is selected, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 0. So an empty cell here denotes that the hand is selected, that is, there is no item being held by the player. So I'll press 1, and I now have the diamond sword selected. If I press 1 again, the diamond sword is now deselected. In fact, nothing is selected. And so the player is now using their hand. So this is obvious when I try mining dirt, for example, because it takes me multiple clicks. If I select a shovel, I destroy it in one click in this case. Task 1.6 revolves around the file menu and dialogues, specifically a file menu that has a new game and exit option. There also needs to be the ability to handle when the player dies and inform them that the player has died and ask for a restart. Now all three of these options will have a dialog box. The appearance of these dialogues will depend a bit on your operating system, being Mac OS X or Windows. So as we can see in the game, if we're on Mac OS X, the global menu bar here is at the top and we have File. 
If you're on Windows, it will appear slightly below the title bar, probably where the mouse is right now. When push file, we should see new game and exit. So if new game is pushed and the player was to say yes, then the game should reset to the current state as we see now. Obviously, if the player presses exit and they say yes, the game should close. Task 2 focuses on features that are of intermediate difficulty to implement, mostly dealing with items and crafting. Task 2 assumes several tasks from Task 1 are implemented, including items for example. Task 2.1.1 Food Item and Task 2.1.2 Tool Items are both similar to the basic item task. In this case, we'll be implementing subclasses of item. In the case of food item, food items should increase our food level if food is less than maximum or otherwise heal us. Uh, this will only occur when you try placing it in the world on an empty block. In the case of tool item, a tool item could be something like a stone pickaxe or wooden pickaxe and that allows us to mine blocks that cannot be mined effectively by hand. Tools have the concept of being depleted or that is having durability. The more a tool is used, let's say on the wrong type of block, the more that durability decreases. In both of these classes, there'll be various methods you need to implement. In the case of food item, strength and place. And in tool item, these methods. Just like in basic item, you can also test your code at the command line by running these code snippets, which we have given you. It should be noted for tool item that since the update spec has been released, um, the numbers here have been corrected such that they do add up correctly. So what does this look like in game? Um, so if our food level is uh, ma less than maximum, which is 10, and I right click to eat an apple, my food level is now 10. Now eating further apples should increase my health level, although this hasn't been implemented in this code I'm running right now. Now, in the case of my iron pickaxe, I should be able to mine blocks rather efficiently if they're made of stone. So for example here, I was able to destroy that stone block in one click. Whereas if I use my hand and empty cell on the hotbar, I can't destroy this block no matter how many times I click. The durability of a tool item can be seen in the bottom left corner of the hotbar cell. In the case of this iron pickaxe, we've got maximum durability of 251. Mining blocks that is designed to mine, such as stone, do not decrease durability. But if I try mining blocks that is not designed for, such as dirt, we can see that durability number is decreasing um, as I keep clicking. Task 2.2 introduces the concept of crafting. The player has a crafting menu that can be opened when the E key has been pressed, and this represents a basic crafting screen um, supporting a crafting grid 2x2 two two cells. In the crafting grid, the player will be able to craft new items from items they already have in their inventory. By default, in the code you have been given, the crafter screen opened will only show the inventory and hotbar. So when we open the crafting screen here, we can see that our inventory hotbar and the crafting screen is available. In this case, I've already got wood, and so let's craft some sticks. I can place a wooden block here and a wooden block here, and by pushing craft, I'll generate sticks that I can now keep in my inventory. Your task will involve you needing to implement at least three crafting recipes that work within this 2x2 two two grid. Task 2.3 introduces the crafting table block. The crafting table block presents a 3x3 crafting grid as opposed to the regular crafting screen that has a 2x2 grid. This grid will allow you to create items that have a larger input. So assuming you have a crafting table implemented, you should be able to place it like a regular block and when you're close to it, right click it. When you open the crafting table screen, you should see a 3x3 grid. It should support the ability to craft items that would have worked on a 2x2 grid, such as the sticks. The crafting grid should also have support for 3x3 items, such as a wooden pickaxe maybe. And that wooden pickaxe should be equipable in your hotbar and usable in mining, for example. 
So in task 2.3, you will need to create three additional 3x3 three three size uh, craftable items. That concludes the overview of the expected functionality for tasks 1 and 2. So remember, if you haven't already updated your code, you'll want to update to the newest version released, version 1.1.0, and the change notes can be seen in the updated assignment sheet at the bottom of the file. Good luck with the assignment, and remember, attend practicals or ask on Piazza if anything is ambiguous.